I, I'm, I'm really committed to showing that you can get a chain, a for-profit chain of low-cost private schools serving these poor communities that you can get that working, working more effectively than government and other private schools. In other words, I'm committed to showing that for profit, the profit motive, can really help the poor, some of the poorest on this planet, do better educationally than otherwise. Sometimes you hear the suggestion that we've got to raise the standards in state education and that if they were performing much better, then the private schools would perform much better. I mean, I. That is certainly true. I, I think you're, without doubt, if these low-cost private schools are going to exist, then almost by definition they've got to be better than the state alternative, which is at least su suggested to be slightly cheaper than the low-cost private schools. But by definition they have to be that. They have to be better. How do you get the state system better? I mean, that's the $60 million question, isn't it, which aid agencies and governments have been working on for decades, and... Um, I don't see it happening in the countries that I work in. The state sector is not necessarily improving. Without that, so if the state sector is very low quality, could the private schools somehow collude on not raising their standards very much? I, I, I find that very unlikely. It suggests, I mean, you can have collusion amongst very big organisations with very strong contractual agreements between them, I'm thinking of OPEC or something like this. But... Uh, these low-cost private schools are operating in an environment where, you know, if I'm running a low-cost private school, I need 100 pupils. I need to get 110 pupils. If I've got 110 pupils, I need 120 in order to pay my teachers to give me that little margin. I'm not going to be allowing others to take my children away or acquiescing in that we're all going to be mediocre. I'm going to be wanting to improve so I can take some more students. You know, every, every little bit... Every little bit matters if you're poor. If you're running with one of these schools from a poor community yourself, you're from the poor community yourself, you're not going to acquiesce in letting, you know, in, in, in not, not expanding your school. Governments have clearly not succeeded here. Governments have been hopeless at doing this. And suddenly then to say, OK, if we're supporting the alternative, then we're letting them off the hook. They've let themselves off the hook. They've let themselves off the hook for decades now. So for me... Uh, I, I get quite angry when I hear this argument because for me it's 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 almost um, an argument. Uh, it, it, it's a disingenuous argument. It's a, it's a disingenuous argument because it's saying, okay, the low-cost private schools somehow now are letting government get away with. It. Government's got away with it for years. That's why the low-cost private schools are there in the first place. Bear in mind the point that the cost of sending a child to a government school might be near parity with the cost of sending a child to a low fee private school and you, you, your exam, you, your your evidence is going to be that many families find it difficult to send children to school full stop that's certainly true i mean why why are their children out of school it's not in general because parents are um, couldn't care less about their children it's because they there's an opportunity cost of them going to school and that's why they're out of school that opportunity cost is there for a government school as well as a low fee private school and uh, I'm not sure, from what I've seen, that the low-cost private schools are much more expensive than a government school when you take into account all the extra costs. Um, also, there's one thing that is worth, worth stressing. Our research, both in India and Africa, showed that most of the low-cost private schools also had free places for their children. Now, sometimes those free places are used for what in India we call class toppers. So if you come top of the class, you might get a free place next year. But sometimes they are used for what you might call genuinely deserving and hardship cases. So if a child is orphaned, um, if a child is, is from a family where you, the, the father runs off or the mother runs off, then often those children will be admitted to the school or to continue their education or allowed to continue their education free afterwards. We found 7% of places in India were free and it was about 5% in the African studies we did. So that's another way in which these low-cost private schools are also reaching down to the very poorest.